Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. All the latest immigration news, highlights, key announcements that make sense, and some of them just don't make any sense. Why should you care which of these new policy changes can actually have an impact on you and which ones you shouldn't really care about? From the BCPNP, Alberta's new tourism hospitality stream, which just opened up and closed in milliseconds. Nova Scotia's new rural entrepreneur stream, which has been launched with one of the lowest investment thresholds across East Coast Canada. The rural northern immigration program becoming permanent soon. And the new francophone rural programs being launched later this year. International student updates, CAPS in BC, the Canadian government remo removing electronic travel authorization status for specific nationals, startup visa, and more updates and news today. Expect nothing more than the exposed truth, just like the rest of our videos on our YouTube channel, folks. Quick introduction if you're watching this and you're like, who is this dude? Well, who am I? I'm Reza from England, Canada, licensed immigration practitioner. And their office specializes in business, helping people, businesses, and families move across various borders across the world. Yeah, I don't look like a consultant or a lawyer, but yeah, this is my casual look, folks. Um, I've been running around. Why are we posting this video? Well, or this live stream? These are made for the purpose of sharing our hands-on immigration knowledge with our worldwide audience, including but not exclusive to existing clients, potential new applicants, and immigration consultants and agencies, no matter where you are. If you're thinking about immigrating, we're here to help. Get a free email assessment with us by filling out the form down below after this live stream is posted on our YouTube channel and our social media. And of course, if you're an active immigration practitioner, we can assist you with outsourcing your back office operations, including assessments, processing of cases, pre and post landing support, and so much more. We are a global mobility solution provider. Many more options than just Canada. We cover Panama, Dubai, Portugal, Spain, New Zealand, UK, US's EB5, and so many other programs, including Greece and Austria and so forth. I could be here all day long, folks. Great news. We're going to be in Vietnam, Hong Kong, China, Los Angeles, San Francisco, participating at key events from March 2024, right now, until May of this year. Reach out to us if you're a B2B partner looking to collaborate or a potential investor who has decided they want to move or have a second residency in your back pocket for that time when you really need it or when you're ready to retire. Because you know, like everything else in this world, Everything becomes more expensive later on, whether it's cars, mobile phones, or passport or immigration. One of our clients is approved from the Far East. So these are countries who are not visa exempt. She was a single mother accompanying her daughter for. Now, if the student has not received their approval yet, we're waiting for that, but the mother was approved to accompany her daughter to school. This was just received during this past week. We'd like to share this news and our client had no prior history of visiting the US or Canada. So it wasn't like a winning case initially. And we're happy for her and her recent temporary resident visa success story to come and help her um, younger daughter to start studying at private school here in Canada. Great. Um, let's look at all the news, folks. And of course, we see everyone. We see you. With your comments and questions, Sahil, Angel, Safa, Eden, Mohamed Omar, Willen, Kater, we will get back to your questions and comments very soon. As soon as we give this little uh, bite-sized update on what's happening in Canadian immigration, folks. And to be honest with you, sometimes it's just not as exciting as other, year, as other uh, months or years. But let's jump into it. New international student caps are being implemented across all provinces in Canada, as most of you know. But there's one province that is shining. Although most provinces expect a drop in international student numbers in this year and going forward due to the federal government announcement in January about the nationwide cap with specific restrictions 
on all fronts, especially for undergraduate uh, students, there's one province that may actually see an increase in student numbers in 2024 and beyond. And that's, you guessed it, Newfoundland and Labrador, or maybe you didn't guess it. Their numbers are expected to increase from 3,000 international students per year to 4,800 this year and beyond. And yeah, that's not a huge number, right? Like compared to BC, which took in about 60,000 international students in 2023, Ontario uh, even doubled that. Uh, this is not a big number, but they're going to see an increase of over, uh, what is that, maybe 30% or more. And that's compared to BC, Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, Ontario. So that's good news for them, right? And always keep that in mind if you're looking to come and study for undergraduate. BC's new provincial attestation letter system for international students studying undergraduate, and remember there are exemptions, is now live as of March 4th of this month. And BC's allocation allows for up to 83,000 undergraduate study permit applications for this year, 2024, which splits between 53% of the allocation going to public, post-secondary institutions, undergraduate, and 47% going to private. The private have been cut more. This number is significantly lower than the 97,000 from last year, again, for undergraduate. And actual study permits, which were approved last year, were about uh, 60,000. Um, and they expect 50,000 to be approved this year. So we will see a significant 10,000 drop in undergraduate studies uh, for international students in BC for 2024. And private institutions are going to see a bigger drop of 27% in BC. Keep in mind, if you're planning to study at a postgraduate level anywhere in Canada, you do not need an attestation letter, and you will not be capped by the federal or provincial intake period. Um, and let's forget international students. We've talked about that enough. It's just too much news out there about Canadian international student restrictions, changes, caps, attestation letters, and whatnot. Let's move on to the hardcore immigration stuff okay so as of february end of february 2024 canada has started revoking electronic travel authorization approvals for mexican nationals who do not meet new eligibility criteria mexican citizens now need to apply for canadian visitor visas at their uh, consulate or embassy and cannot apply for an electronic travel authorization which is for visa exam countries if they do not currently hold a valid non-immigrant U.S. visa, or they've never had a Canadian visitor visa in the past 10 years. They must also be traveling by air to Canada. Otherwise, the ETA won't work if, even if they meet these previous visa requirements. This means if you're traveling through the land borders, you'll need an actual visitor visa. Even if you ha had a Canadian visitor visa in the past 10 years or have a valid U.S. visa at the time of coming over. If you don't meet the visa requirements as stated, you need to apply for Canadian consulate and embassy to receive the visa approval. So we'll see how those processing times will gradually increase. This affects even workers and students in Canada who are Mexican nationals who have valid work permits and study permits, have gone home for a visit and now don't have a visa to come back and their ETAs, ETAs have been revoked. So they've actually received notification in the GCQ portal that your ETA is not valid anymore if they do not meet the, the, the criteria that I just mentioned, valid U.S. visa, or they've actually held a visitor visa in the last 10 years. And, you know, most Mexican nationals don't apply for visitor visa, so it kind of doesn't make sense. Um, so they'll be stuck outside till they apply to come back in with a visitor visa. So... Let's jump in. Folks, remember, we're always posting about key details and updates with IRCC, new programs and other programs for professionals and entrepreneurs. And that's if that's what you're interested in, of course, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and then, ding, you can subscribe. Nova Scotia has launched its lowest investment tier rural entrepreneur program, and it is the lowest in East Coast of Canada. As of February 27, 2024, the province of Nova Scotia, one of my favorite immigration provincial programs out there. And if you watch any of our previous videos, you know I'm always talking about Nova Scotia. I don't know why. Maybe I'm in love. Maybe it's just butterflies. No clue. They have announced a new rural entrepreneur program, which has a minimum investment, $100,000 plus, and a net worth of $400,000, which is much lower than its traditional entrepreneur program, 
for the Halifax region, which is at $150,000 now and a net worth of $600,000. So if you go outside of that metropolitan Halifax region, you could be eligible for these lower investments amounts. They've seen the BC, they've seen that BC and Alberta have had success with their rural investor programs, which are also at 100,000. And although they're at 300,000 net worth, not 400. So Nova Scotia decided, hey, we're going to launch this and attract more investors. Although BC's regional pilot, which is their rural entrepreneur program, is actually winding down and they're not sure if they're going to extend it. More about that later. And I believe this new Nova Scotia program is a great program for people who, applicants who want to live and settle in Nova Scotia and potentially have lower investment amounts and not have huge net worths or huge investment amounts in a country they've never done business with, right? Reality check. BCPNP News draws language exams and rural regional pilot update. So BC Provincial Nominee Program is still making it nearly impossible to be invited for PR through the Provincial Nominee Program based on the high points threshold of the program. We've simulated approximately 100 profiles against their points matrix. And unless you're a healthcare worker, ECE, early childhood educator, or highly paid engineer, tech, or media worker with a very high language score and wage, you have absolutely no chance of being invited for PR. Congratulations, folks. And congratulations to BCPNP. Even for construction workers, their stream that came in later in 2023, and the semi-skilled workers, whether it's hospitality, tourism, whatnot, with the lower points threshold that they have in the draws, we've calculated what you need. And it's literally, drum roll, impossible. We have no clue what the BCPMP's office is thinking, but it seems like they're not interested and don't want to invite more permanent residents compared to previous years, at least that are not in those specific occupations. I only recommend this province for highly paid, highly qualified IT tech engineer occupations. If you're an undergraduate student looking to work after you graduate in BC, let's say you're at a college or university, and I'm talking about undergraduate, not graduate, and you want to convert to PR, I suggest to go watch the latest Tom Cruise movie, Mission Impossible 7, because you might need to learn some of those tricks to actually have a chance in BC to convert to PR. And I'm not kidding. Okay. Or you can just, you know, pass fails, just get married. Canadian. Just kidding. BC PNP, or maybe I wasn't. BC PNP Rural Entrepreneur Program, like I said, which is called the Regional Pilot Program, which has the lowest investment for entrepreneurs and net worth was launched in 2019 it's been extended till this march right now this month of 2024 but they're not sure if they're going to extend it so if you're already in the pool you're getting invited great if you're planning to go forget it it's not worth applying now until they confirm and it was just so to remind you guys hundred thousand dollar minimum investment three hundred thousand dollar net worth rivaling alberta's rural program for entrepreneurs, which was the same figures, but BC launched it first and Alberta copied it. Now Nova Scotia has copied it with a little bit of a higher net worth by $100,000. Another news from BC, January 30th this year, IRCC started accepting Pearson Tests of English, the PTE core, across all of its immigration programs for language proficiency alongside IELTS and CELPIP. So I'm talking about permanent immigration because you know for education, you could do TOEFL and other types of language exams. However, BCPMP has said we're not accepting this new Pearson until further notice. So fingers crossed. Let's see when they'll wake up because it seems to be like they're in deep sleep. Uh, Alberta Tourism and Hospitality Streams. Like you may know, you've heard about it. Probably you're on Instagram, Snapchat. I don't know. I'm starting to lose track of how many social media platforms there are. You've heard of Alberta PMP also known as the Alberta Advantage Immigration Program, launching its tourism and hospitality stream as of March 1st this year, 2024. I'm not going to bore you with the details because there's a lot of little criteria, but here's our editorial comment on this new stream in Alberta. All I can say, this is not, okay, all I can say <laughs> is not to waste your time waiting for this program for too long. Okay, it's closed already, literally closed in less than a day, I think in seconds. I'm not sure who actually saw this program being open. 
has very strict eligibility criteria. You should still be working for the employer in Alberta. And I'm like, why would anyone be actually interested in this program? And provinces like Nova Scotia and other PNPs, like even Saskatchewan, have much easier eligibility criteria for hospitality-based foreign workers and shouldn't, don't even need to be working for that employer at the time of application. So, And they don't close in seconds, right? And those programs have been open all year long, right? And in Nova Scotia, remember, there's no points either. I mean... Our prediction is Alberta PMP will be making its skilled worker streams to so the other streams much more strict by the end of this year, 2024. And we do anticipate it further changes in the next six to eight months. But in general, all I can say, Alberta, for your new tourism hospitality stream is that we're not impressed. And I don't see how that's going to attract more of those workers to that province if you closed it the same day you opened it. Okay? Shame on you. <laughs> Saskatchewan pauses it's hard to fill skills pilot earlier this year the provincial nominee program in Saskatchewan paused it's hard to fill skills pro program for further review and potential changes which could be relaunched later maybe end of March or sometime in April there's approximately 33 low skilled occupations for the stream that are all low skilled so tier level 4 and 5 which is the old NOC uh, level I think 3 or 4 not sure so those occupations, it's difficult to find streams to apply for PR, but in Saskatchewan, they made this for those high demand, low skill jobs to apply for PR. Some of the occupations in this stream, for example, were machine operators, laborers, truck drivers, and many more industrial low skill jobs. They did announce that occupations in healthcare, agriculture, and value add agri-based industries, also in those low occupation, skill level, are still exempt from this pause. So those occupations can still apply for that program for the permanent residency. There are, there are other programs that are still open, running like clockwork. So again, very immigration-friendly province. I mean, their, their weather is not the best, but hey, what can you say? Start of visa news. We're seeing more and more approvals with the start of visa program. And also new IRCC officers being assigned to start of visa processing cases and centers. This is great news since it means the IRCC is increasing the processing capacity to really hit that 17,000 three-year target for permanent residents under the Start of Visa and Self-Employed programs. Although the IRCC rarely issues any updates or news or insights into the Canadian Start of Visa program, it's like a black box, we're monitoring our client cases and seeing these new officer numbers being introduced. So there's officers that are sending questions, and I know they copy-pasted them from other senior officers because we keep track of that. We have a database of officer ID numbers, their questions, uh, and basically we analyze those for IRCC, IRCC trends. And that secretive SUV processing team in Sydney, Nova Scotia, yeah, that's the only way to figure out what's happening in the startup visa world. But we're seeing new officers being assigned, which means more resource allocation from IRCC. Because if they promise the world 17,000 PRs in three years for self-employed and startup visa, well, they better deliver. Because we're seeing a huge influx of applicants for startup visa. However, like I always say, they mutate over every six months, the way they process it, right? You got to keep track. It's like I don't know. It's like being a pilot in an airplane, right? You're in the skies. You got to navigate. Weather's changing. Conditions are changing, right? Mechanics, nature. That's how I feel with startup visa. It's like literally they provide you nothing and you got to kind of navigate as you see these IRCC officers sending their questions, making decisions, getting deeper into these uh, cases and their processing times, which have significantly improved like I've said throughout the last few months on all of our videos and live streams. If you like immigration hacks, creative immigration solutions, or key analysis and the exposed truth about immigration policies and updates, then you can click on the subscribe button for our YouTube channel. And if you like my jacket, you can still subscribe. Don't worry. <laughs> if you're thinking about immigrating, whether permanent or temporary, you're at the right place. Why do I say that? We just don't offer immigration. We offer solutions. I can guarantee you only one point. You'll know what to expect. The entire process clearly laid out for you and all the risks identified, including costs. 
advantages, disadvantages. That's how it should be, right? Our legal agreements are based on payment milestones, which are linked directly to your application progression. We don't take 100% advanced payment for business immigration clients. And of course, you're in control of which program you choose for your immigration. We give you all the options based on your eligibility and your profile, then you decide, okay? Does your local immigration agency offer you that? Or are they just trying to push one program down your throat? We have a $1 million liability insurance which protects you and us from fraud or mistakes, as well as a dedicated client trust account with our Canadian banking institutions. Our team speaks over nine languages. You can test us out. And we help applicants from over 50 different countries during their immigration. But this has probably increased to 60 by now, but I haven't had the time to get the statistics from our office. Click the link below this video and get a free email assessment for eligible applicants only. Eligible is the keyboard. And if you're ready to apply, you want to book a one-on-one -on -one session with me or one of my licensed immigration team members at anyway, we can also book a session using the link in the consultation of the description of this video when it's posted. And don't worry, during the consultation, I will not speak so fast because it's difficult to slow motion me in a live session. And if you want to take our immigration knowledge for a test drive before you book a one-on-one, -on -one, because you're like, hey, how do I know you know what you're talking about? Well, you can tune into our YouTube live channel every week where we have our regularly scheduled stream, like right now, where we answer all of your questions for free on the spot. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified of what day of the week and what time, because our timings are going to change over the next few weeks. And you'll see that, folks. We're not going to be here at this time right now every week. It's going to change around. We're going to mix and match. It's going to be like a lottery. Let's get back to our questions and comments on our YouTube channel. If you're watching this later on, the recording, you're like, who's he talking to? Well, I'm going through the YouTube channel questions and comments and responding to them live. And if you want your question to be answered, just tune in to our next week's uh, YouTube um, live stream. But next week, we're going to be overseas, folks. So we, we may not have it, but the week after, definitely. Shana Rafi, Salam Razija. My brother's tourist visa will expire on April 15th. If he enters Canada a few days before his expired date, can he apply for the Iranian open work permit? Yes. And like we've all heard, that policy has been extended another yet. I had predicted it incorrectly that it would not because I didn't see a reason because other programs for other nationals were not renewed. But for Iranians, it seems it's renewed to be able to op apply for an open work permit without any fees if they have valid status inside Canada and they're Iranian nationals. Um, yes, Shanna. Good question. Thanks for reminding me. And I didn't include it in my update. I don't know why. But yeah, I forgot about it. Sometimes you take things for granted. What can I say? But yes, if he arrives, he's got valid status with his visa. He's got an Iranian passport. Doesn't need to enter with an Iranian. And remember, folks, this is where everyone makes a mistake. At the time of decision making for IRCC, he's got to be in Canada. So a lot of people come in, they apply to go back wherever, right? They would be refused. At the time of decision, and you don't know when that is, that could be in four weeks, six weeks, or three months, the officer will may ask them, where are you? Are you inside the country? Please let us know if they suspect something. If they don't, they'll usually approve you, right? Because literally, there's no eligibility. Inside Canada, it's valid status, that passport from that country. Thanks, uh, Shana, for bringing that up. Great question, by the way. I love great questions, folks. Throw them at me. Come on, come on. We're going to play ping pong. Immigration ping pong. Sahil Malik, start a visa PR timeline after medical and start a visa PR timeline uh, after the ADR documents. Ah, the, the $1 million question I get every week. <laughs> if I get five cents for every time somebody asks me that, I think I could probably be neighbors with Bill Gates right now. Okay. <laughs> um, start a visa PR timeline after medical and start a visa PR time after the acknowledgement of documents received. Um, after ADR, if you applied, you're looking at around a year, year and a half right now. If you had applied in 2020, 2021, no, that was a three-year process. 2023 onwards and four, you're looking at 18 months. And after medical, potentially, if, if they've requested medical, you're looking at anywhere from a you know, four to six months, maybe, 
depending on the officer. It, it varies a lot. I've seen a lot. And again, folks, I said this last week, we have to see how the processing has changed this year. It's faster. So if I tell you what I saw last year, it may not apply this year. Angel says, good morning, Reza. Angel, good to see you. When I see you in our YouTube, I don't see you. I read you. <laughs> I see you. Um, I feel comfortable. I'm like, okay, Angel is here. We're in good hands. Safa, hi, Reza. Nice haircut. Yeah. <laughs> It's a little bit wet. Um, this is my lazy look. I don't want to prepare my hair. I'm a bit in a rush today, traveling in the morning. Got to pack, get ready. And uh, yeah, that's the look. Hope you guys enjoy it. Eden Garden. Hello, Reza. Is the new digital nomad program intact now? Could you provide help with the application? Thank you. As always, you're the best. Well, thank you, Eden. I appreciate the positive feedback. Not the best, but <laughs> I try to be. Um, digital nomad visa is there it's it's pretty stupid program okay i can be honest it's just basically a visitor visa um and yes you can apply yes we do help you do have to have a strong profile similar to visitor visa except that you've got to have a good job you can be working remote you're not like working in a restaurant because that's not impossible to work remotely good financials if you have travel history ties to your home country you know insurance the income from your occupation that you want to be working at a canadian one is not but if you've got a great profile eden uh let us know how one gets refused for work permit under stv pro due to misrepresentation of u.s visa refusal or any other reason as is it advisable to reapply or just wait for the pr to get processed hmm well you can if the officer has refused you and hasn't given you a chance, you can always reapply and explain what happened, why you didn't uh, declare your previous refusals to US or UK or wherever else. Uh, do an affidavit, right? Maybe provide some proof of what happened that you didn't represent, and you can try again. So the officer can consider it. Okay, so this is SUV refuse work permit, folks, in case you've been hit with a misrep while your PR is under process, okay? Willen Hater, I'm one confused individual. Willen. Okay, well, we're all confused at one at some point in our lives, Willen. So don't worry. We've been there. I'm 30, completed university with bachelor's of science in agriculture, no work experience, speak both French and English, computer, uh, computed a comprehensive ranking score in Express Entry of 474. Is this enough for Express Entry? Good news, Willen. You don't need to be confused. <coughs> If you know French and you meet the minimum French requirements, you can be invited under the francophone CBS draws, the, the category-based selection. And even some of our staff who are international students in Canada who spoke French were invited for PR and got converted. So I'm not sure how long you've had your Express Entry profile. And if you're a French-speaking applicant, okay, with your profile, if it's new, then expect to be invited soon. If you've been in there for a while, then maybe your French score isn't as it should be. Nashwan Ali. Hi, Reza. If someone has a valid biometrics for temporary visa application in the past, does that mean that IRCC will not request new biometrics for new PR applications under SUV? Uh, no, they have. During COVID, it was exempt, but they will request it again. Sahil Malik. What comes first, ADR or medical instead of visa? If they request a uh, medical, it is after the ADR. Mohammed Oman Khan, hi Reza. After the pre-arrival notice, do we get, and he's talking about startup visa, by the way, do we get directly the electronic confirmation of PR or is there any acknowledgement or form we have to fill to apply for the ECPU co uh, electronic confirmation of PR? We founders role in Canada under STB program. So they will send a confirmation that we need your details to finalize your COPR. So you'll receive an email. You have to upload it, you know, uh, send your pictures and all the latest information, and then it'll be issued. Yes. There's no, like, it's not like a form. It's just there's specific information which you have to reply and fill out. Um, Nalin Tushara. Hello, Reza. How are you doing? Thanks, Nalin. Uh, doing well. I applied for a New Brunswick EY in December 2020, but I haven't received any update. However, someone who applied after me has received this update. What is why is that? 
It could be because of the occupation, because they, the Atlantic provinces are quite discretionary in Ali. So it's not like the federal program where you meet the points, eligibility, it's automatic. They do pick and choose depending on your occupation, your profile, your background. So that could be one thing, but I don't know the details of your profile and the other person. So I cannot comment in detail. Sahil Malik, how much time for the medical and start of visa after all members receive the permanent file number? Um, so usually it could, well, it depends when you applied. If you apply in 2020, 2021, it can take three years. If you applied recently, you're looking at a 15 month uh, time period and it could be even sooner forward but you're looking 12 to 18 months angel at the moment kids are international students and will be landed immigrants before fall 2024 what should be done with the offer letter and provincial attestation letter they receive as an international student it's all void as soon as they get the confirmation of pr angel so as soon as you get a confirmation of pr you or you know i guess they're here electronic copr that's it every visa or permit whatever is out the door just Keep a copy of it because later on for citizenship, if you choose to, and I know some nationalities cannot have dual citizenship, you will use all those documents to prove that you can get credit for half a day for every day you've spent here with the permits, whether it's your children yourself, uh, for maximum credit of one year to be discounted from the three-year citizenship eligibility. Okay? Um, so, yeah. So you don't need anything. Attestations, whatever. If you get your... The electronic confirmation of PR before fall, and you're already registered for school, it's good. Safa Sala, RCC asks for police clearance, commitment certificates, business plan, bank statements, lots of IMM forms, travel history, and passports. We provided them two months ago, then now sell. Any estimate? We've had silences from four to six months, just to give you an idea, Safa. Okay. That's two month silence is like normal. It's like it's like two days in dog dog years. Um, Nashvan Hali, and I always mention dog years, and I always think IRCC is, uh, they're in, they work in dog years, dog timelines, not really in humans. Um, and no offense to IRCC if you're watching this, you know, that was just like a side joke, no offense. Don't refuse my applications, I'm just kidding. Uh, hmm. Nashvan Hali, does new medical exam requests received from IRCC after almost two to three requests before that, after receiving the permanent file number for PR application on nursery, mean that final decision will be given? Uh, yes, 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 yes. Shana Rafi Rezajan, the, the brother I talked to you about is a professional track driver. Ooh, so cool. Uh, I used to be a Formula One fan back in the day. Which province is better for him to apply as a driver or establish a transportation company? Truck? Oh, not track driver. I think, Sh Shana, you mean truck driver. Okay, sorry. Formula One's different. Truck drivers are different. Um there's a shortage in every province. Get his license, get him to work. Boom, he has a job. Manitoba is the hub of logistics across Canada. But every single province has a shortage of truck drivers. So it could be Ontario, Atlantic, and Manitoba, Saskatchewan. You name it, they need it. Okay? So, Shana, my first suggestion, if wherever you are, and if you guys get along, uh, stick around in your province. Why move somewhere else? However, if he's looking for PR later on, then specifically look at provinces that have truck drivers or that occupation skill level uh, without much difficulty. So Ontario, if you're in Ontario, I'm not where you are, Shana. I mean, I probably forgot you told me probably months ago. Um, like, if you tell me, I can tell you potentially there is a stream for PR for truck drivers later on after he's gained that experience as a truck driver working for an employer or not. Remember, he should not be an independent contractor. It should be on payroll. Uh, Fahimer Refoi, good morning. Good morning to Vancouver. Um, just FYI to our folks, our fans in BC, uh, West Coast, North America, we will be changing the time zones for the live over the next two months because of where I'm traveling. So we'll be going very early and we might miss you because I'm pretty sure you don't want to wake up 4 a.m. to watch me. <laughs> if you do, that's great, but I wouldn't if I was in your shoes. Fahimer Refai, this, this is an immigration question, but released to the immigration. Do you use any specific software for file management? Uh, yeah, we use. Uh, we don't use any softwares for form applications form filling and stuff, um, and I know, I know a lot of immigration lawyers and consultants do that. I mean, we probably should eventually. We use Citrix ShareFile 
for uh, secure document management on the cloud, right? Requesting um, documents from our clients and uh, sharing secure documents. It's fully encrypted. We have Canadian servers from them. Citrix is actually an American company, but we have their servers in Canada. It's an enterprise uh, solution just to create security and uh, reliability. It's not good for like single, like people who are like just one or two people uh, operating, but that's what we use, Citrix, Sherpa, but there's so many solutions out there. Mahir Haji Tehrani, wow, that's a cool name. Hi, Reza Jun, I got, um, and folks, if you don't know what Reza Jun is, and if you're from India, it pretty much, it's almost like Reza G, okay? That could be the equivalent. Uh, um, yeah, I think so. Uh, I got open work permit from Iranian policy. I'm a newcomer in Halifax or for AIP or other programs in Halifax. The general jobs or part-time jobs count, count for applying for PR. So uh, Mahir, part-time doesn't work with employer sponsorship for PR. It does count as work experience under express entry or accumulation of for eligibility. But you do need a full-time offer of employment from uh, an employer that's either designated under AIP or in the, you know, has a two year operational history in Nova Scotia. For eligibility, it counts, but for the offer of employment to apply for PR, it doesn't. So I hope that's answered your question. I intend to learn French. Does it help? Yeah, it does, but in Nova Scotia, you don't need it. Atlantic. Yeah. In Nova Scotia, there's no points. So why would you learn? Um, and AIP, there's no points. And those are our favorite programs. Um, Mohammed Kamus, good morning. Good morning to you, wherever you are. Mohammed Kamus, can an open work permit holder can be a partner business with Canadian? 100% yes. Mohammed Omar Khan, I just now received an email subject, RCC permit residence confirmation portal. What does this mean? They are asking for your updated details to issue you your co confirmation of PR. After that reply, within days or weeks, Mohammed, congratulations. You're a Canadian PR very soon. So that's great news. The doc says your application for Barra is now ready for your final blah, blah, blah. You complete this process to the, yes, yes, exactly. Or can he or she open a business with open work permit? Yeah, so oh, Mohammed Omar Khan, yes, you're almost there. Reply, give that information through the portal, maybe even the photo update, and you will become a Canadian PR. So congratulations. We have a live PR folks online here. Nice work. Mohammed Omar Khan, the docs, yes. Mohammed Kamus. Okay, a lot of Mohammeds here. Uh, Mohammed Kamus, hold on, I lost the question here. Can he or she open a business with an open work? Yes, Mohammed, you can open a million businesses, 10,000 with an open work permit. You can sit at home, watch TV, you can work, start businesses, become partners, whatever that is legal in Canada, you can do with an open work permit, okay? Jaji Zakaria Jacob. Hello, sir. I have one year experience in Canada and 11 months electrician experience back home. And am I eligible for category based draws if electrician is my primary code? Yes. You need six months in the last three years in that NAW code if it's part of the CBS and the eligibility for express entry in general under federal skilled trades, workers, or CEC. But the CBS will look at your history and see if you had that in the last three years, six months. Aigun, Aigun, I don't know how you pronounce it. I hope I pronounce it correctly. Hi, Reza. My husband is 60 years old. I'm almost 60. He's a civil engineer with one year of experience in the field. However, he's experienced self-employed in floor and covering, and both are British. Any advice? So he has self-employed experience, floor and covering, and both are and we are both British. Okay. Uh, any advice in terms of PR? Well, it's easy to get work visas. I go, I gone, uh, I gone, I gone. I hope I pronounce it right. Um, but to get a PR, you got to go through the same programs as everyone else. You'll be immediately hired because he's got good English. He can become, uh, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of provinces are looking for civil engineers, or even if you want to go in as a technical trades. There's a huge. Uh, shortage of trades for construction. So if he can get into that carpenter stuff and Nova Scotia, BC, and he's he's British, so he's got all the right criteria. He's a civil engineer. You are a shoe-in for PR. 
under the PNP if you've got an employer, right? BCPMP does not limit you with age. Nova Scotia actually does. <laughs> so keep keep away from that one. But BC doesn't. So just to give you an example, obviously there's options in Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and so forth. Uh, a lot of PNPs do not limit you or, or on age. Actually, Nova Scotia does. So be careful with it. Love Canada. That's the name of the person asking. I'm a PHU, but not jobs. Yeah, it's a tough one. Ceci. T. Good morning. My first time of watching live. Thank you for explanations. Question. Can one qualify for PNP in Ontario after four months of LMI as a carpenter? I believe it's in the nine months. Well, carpenter. Hold on. Hold on. What tier code is this? This is a live question, folks. I should know the answer, right? No, of course I don't. There's 170 programs out there. <laughs> how should I, how should I know everything? But yes, of course we'll find out. Um, uh, carpenters are tier two so yeah you you should be fine yeah tier two okay so cct first of all welcome to our live stream which is every week not at the same time not the same day carpenters are tier two so you don't you can be qualified even if you've never worked for the employer to be nominated two key issues you would have to have minimum work experience overseas or inside Canada, either one, in that NOC code as carpenter to be eligible. Plus, it's a point. So, says CT, if you've calculated your points and you're in the OIMP pool because you meet the minimum work experience eligibility, but you haven't been invited because you don't have enough points. So, an LMIA getting a work permit and working for the employer six months will give you double bonus points. So, you get... Bonus points for working for them at this time and bonus points if you're working six months or more. So if you don't have enough points based on key eligibility, even though you can apply from overseas for direct PR, a lot of clients of our clients do, sometimes you just don't have those points for the draws with OIMP. So the LMI can help you. So please reverse calculate your uh, points and see what chances you have. Maybe you're already there in the pool. Maybe you're not. Uh, so I hope I've given you some clarity. And again, welcome to our show. Um, yeah, no special effects, though. I know. Monica Gaki. How long can one reapply for visa visa after denial? Next second. You get the refusal, you apply for a new one. But best practice is request the ATIP, access, the global case management system notes from the officer to see what specific things they didn't like about your application or were they in sleepy mode and just bulk refused. Uh, get that and then reapply. But officially, there's no regulation to say you've got to wait this much. And I've heard that a lot around with other consultants and even online that you got to wait for 30 days or a month before you can reapply. Fact check, folks. There's no limit on how many times you can reapply. You know, you're paying the government. They'd love to process your application, maybe refuse it more. Two, there's no time limit to wait before you reapply. Okay? End of story. But best practice is get the do an ATIP access to information and uh, privacy. Um, ATIP access to information and privacy act to request the refusal notes from that embassy or that office in Canada, wherever you are for that application. Angel, Reza, we got a physical COPR on our outside Canada and we'll land in August. So does that mean that attestation later is a waste? Well, yeah, I mean, why do you need it? You'll be a PR before school starts. As long as you're registered in the school, everything else is done. The COPR, if you're outside and you've got an entry visa to come in, that's it. Study permit, attestation letter, study permit, like work permits, that is out the window. Keep a scan for your citizenship. That's all I care, care about at this point. But you do not need that because you will land as a PR and they'll stamp you as a PR. End of story, Angel. Okay. I mean, you've been watching this uh, live stream for so long. You should be answering these questions, Angel. You should be here instead of me. I should be swimming or tan sun tanning somewhere. Just kidding. Muhammad Omar Khan. So it seems I have the COPR email just now only for my son, but not for the rest of us. Do we wait? Yes. Reply. Okay. And then put a little note that you're waiting for the rest of the family and put their UCI numbers and case numbers. Uh, but they'll come. I've seen our, our clients as well. The family, sometimes there's gaps. It's normal. It's IRCC. What can you expect? I'm also right now a business trip outside. Do I get back to Canada and then respond to email? So if it's for your son and he's inside Canada, right? Yeah. So that doesn't, 
uh, affect you, right? So he, if he's inside, he will reply. But if he's not inside, it's an issue, right? He's got to go back and then reply, okay? Ufedo Baba. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Ufeda. Ufedo. Fahime Refai. I'm looking forward to meeting you. Ah, Fahime. Yes. Vancouver. You got to remind me. Send me an email. Okay, make sure it's a clear subject. Send me an email early May, like between 1st to uh, 7th of May, because then the week after, well, I'll be in Vancouver. Um, Ufedo Baba. Hello, sir. I'm a skilled farm super. How can you help to relocate? Ufedo, you got to find an employer to sponsor you or start a business. There's not a lot of other options, unfortunately. Aigun, hi res again. Is it possible a 60 year old self employed full of carving and solid to find a job and get PR? Which province would you recommend? Is being British helps? If being British means you, you probably get a high score. If, uh, if your husband has a civil engineering degree, again, you get higher points. Yes, avoid Nova Scotia, but every other province. Let me check if Nova Scotia has uh, a age limit for uh, construction workers because. Because everything else, they have an age limit. But for the critical construction worker uh, pilot, which is a new program they launched this year, and I love it. Let me see if there's an age limit. And usually they do. Ah, oh, there's no age limit. No, there is. Yeah. Avoid Nova Scotia. That's my only advice. How are you going? Okay. Um, is it better to come with a visa visa as a British, find a job, get a work permit? Yeah. Yeah. Because overseas, nobody hires anyone. Um, and yeah. Sajid, good morning, Reza. I'm eligible for three-year postgraduate work permit after completing my one-year LLM from uh, York University. LLM, what was that? Like uh, legal law management, something like that. I don't know. Sorry about that. Is it possible I may be issued a PGWP that is less than three years once I apply? It is possible, depending on the officer. If it does and they make a mistake, you re you re request a reconsideration. If they feel like you didn't, you were not a full-time student during this entire duration of your studies, they can also limit it. And it's also make sure, you know, uh, in most cases, if you did everything by the book and you were a full-time student and there was no gaps and you completed successfully, they will give you a three year, 99% of the time. Out of 100 PGWPs we've done, there was only one that they didn't give uh, them a three year. And then we applied this and said, well, you made a mistake. And then they got the suggestion. Aigun, is it better to come with a visa visa? Yes. Monica Gaki, redacted message. Judge Zakaria Jacob. Hi, and also my 11 months in the system counts as one year. I received points from it. Should I refuse my ITA if I'm on the line of cutoff points because I received 13 points more? Yeah, if it does not meet, if you are not at 12 months as of the day you started, okay? So if you started in March 7th, 2023, and uh, and you received an invitation on March 1st, does not count. Decline it. It's a glitch in um, express entry. Uh, Angel says, what does PR bio 2 mean in COPR? No clue. Is that a field? It's probably the bio fields where they want all your information. That's what I'm assuming. Judges at Kira Jacob. Thank you, sir. No problem. Zara Health Freak. That's the name of the person asking this question. Good morning. I had applied for a TRP temporary resident permit, but haven't received any response at all in eight months. Is this normal? What should I do? Uh, look at the processing times for temporary resident permits, and we can do it together, of course. Uh, and usually it's six months or more, just so you know. My God, what is this? Hold on. Uh, da, 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 da. And you web form it after you apply. And I know it's a paper application because we're doing them too. Um, Temporary residence. Yeah. It's usually like six months or more. Okay. Uh, but the key is um, the key is that eight eight months is fine. If you get closer to 10 months, I would highly recommend to send a uh, web form to follow up. But if, uh, but the problem is with TRPs, they are on paper. So that's where you kind of get stuck. However, start following up after 10 months or more. Sorry, I couldn't help you more. Mohammed Kamus, thank you, Reza, no problem. Nashwan Ali, thanks, Reza, for answering my question with regards to my previous question about medical exam requests at two to three requests from RCC. What is your timeline estimate to give the final decision after that? Um, I think I mentioned this, right? Um, usually, could be three to six months, four to six months. I've seen two months, and I've seen one month, and I've seen eight months. So, 
three to six months. I guess Adil Ahmed. Hi, sir. Hey, Adil. Ufedo Baba, I have five years experience as a farm supervisor. Please, how can you help me? I'm 30 years old from Nigeria. Unfortunately, Ufedo, I can't connect you. You've got to, you know, get the employer to sponsor you potentially or want to hire you. Muntasir Mustafa, good morning, Reza. If you remember me, I used to ask you about SCV updates. Happy to inform you that we got our PR in November. It took just one and a half years from our applicant with no hassle. Perfect, Muntasir. This is great news. Congratulations. And it revalidates my processing time that I've been telling everyone that it's 18 to 24 months right now for IRCC SUV applications for PR that are after 2022 onwards. So to end of 2022 or early 2023 now, they're all getting processed in 18 to 24. So this validates our theory, Montasir, that we've seen in many cases in our clients. And I thank you for sharing that information and congratulations, you're officially a Canadian tax resident. <laughs> Fahime Refai, LLM is a master's in law. Ah, thanks, Fahime. I'm, I'm not very good with the higher education acronyms. Master's in law. Thanks, Sajid, as well. Appreciate it, folks. Uh, yeah, you learn something new every day on this live, and I appreciate that. Ray Youssef, it looks Manitoba as if Manitoba, Manitoba PMP does count work experience gained under RCC public policy, except one has work permit. Is this correct? So Ray is asking that Manitoba PMP counts work experience gained under RCC public policies. Yes, I mean if you have a if you have a work permit, let's say an open work permit under a public policy, that counts as Canadian work experience as long as you're not self-employed. Okay, so hope that answers. Cecity, no problem. I do hope it was useful. The answer I gave you. Snow, the person who's asking the question. Background checks has been processed for eight months. So it doesn't mean initial approval or eligibility pass. I can't base any assumptions on that. So no, that you know, background check could take way longer. I've had clients wait for background checks in different programs for more than two years. But it depends where you're from, what program you're applying. On. I go on. Thank you so much for being so helpful. Please leave your details so that I could get in touch with you. Many thanks. Um, here, just you know, fill out a form. Here you go. Left the link. Um, otherwise, you can also email my colleague, expect a reply on Monday, mention you connect on YouTube and what you're looking for. Again, folks, usually we dedicate our time on YouTube channel one hour a week to answer your questions, do free, you know, back and forth. We learn from you and you learn from everyone else on the on this live stream. That's how it works. We don't answer consultation questions through email or remotely. Uh, obviously, we're busy with client files because, you know, when they hire us, they expect us to put in time. So we do dedicate this one hour to answer questions. Um, and if you're just sending random emails to us asking to give you advice, well, sorry, this is the one hour that we're dedicating to you. We can't really um, dedicate more because my clients would fire me, right? My paying clients. So, folks. Thanks for joining us today. Next week back. Well, we're not here next week, so that's the only thing I can let you know. But the week after, we're here, and our time zones are changing, so the timings are changing. Subscribe to the YouTube channel to be notified. And if you're sleeping at time, we'll get online. That's fine. Catch us the week after. Uh, thanks, everyone. Sajid, thank you. Thanks, uh, you know, Sajid Fahime, uh, Adil, Mohammed Kamus. Uh, Montasser, thanks for sharing all that great information. We had two people here who co got confirmation of PR and they're sharing their news. This is good. Jaji, Angel, always a pleasure to see you or read you. Uh, congrats on the PR. And, you know, hopefully you'll be here with your kids. Monica, Aigun, Ufedo, and of course, um, Ceci T. Thanks for coming on board today on our live stream. And Safa Saleh, Mahyar. Um, who else came? Okay. Nashua and Ali, of course. Uh, Ayugunya, Nalin, everyone who was here, Sahil Malik, uh, Shana Rafi, yes, your brother, truck driver. Thanks, folks. Safa, thanks, Monica, Femia, everyone. Take care and remember, folks, before applying, do some research, plan ahead, reverse engineer, figure out all, everything till the end. Don't just apply blindly for the sake of applying. Good luck. Happy immigration to everyone, and congrats to those who already have their PR. See you soon, not next week, but the week after. Thanks again, folks. And 
some like buttons press the like button otherwise they'll fire me my marketing team's like breathing down my neck they're like you're not getting enough likes on these youtube videos i'm like wow what can i do i can't can't bribe everyone to like these videos so press the like button and we appreciate it. thank you whoever pressed that like button i just saw somebody do that thanks again for us justin uh, rugazuro hello justin we gotta go Alman. no problem Alman. nice to see you by the way i want your email it's not my email i'll give it to you right now justin but i don't do consultations over email just so you know okay folks take care this is the last goodbye for this week have a good evening morning afternoon take care folks great seeing everyone Fahime, thank you i pressed the like button thanks Fahime. <laughs> i knew it was you no i didn't know but i know you would have pressed the like button take care